What do you think? What's up, Charlotte County? <laughs> How are we doing? Uh, my name is Chris Chan, the host of Senior Source TV and the owner of Chelsea Place Senior Care. And today, whoa, I'm about to throw stuff all over the place here, man. I didn't mean to throw a computer at you. That's okay. But today we have Jessie Cantwell, and she's got this fancy title at Life Care Center in Gorda, Business Development Director. Director. There mm-hmm. we go. So, uh, so essentially she is an expert, though, in skilled nursing. When I first came across Jessie, uh, it was actually in regards to a question that I had for one of our residents in our assisted living facility. And, um, and I, I just simply asked her like two questions about Medicaid and how it worked in long-term care. And she sent me back a booklet <laughs> of information. And uh, it was just so helpful. It was, it was a great, it was just a lot of great information. I was, I was really grateful to be able to actually, you know, um, you know, reach out to her and receive such, such valuable information. Because a lot of people don't know about how that works. They don't. Mm-hmm. They don't know how Medicaid works. They don't know how Medicaid, what it pays for, how it pays for it, how to go ahead and apply for it. And, mm-hmm. and so uh, I know one of the things we wanted to talk about today is what is a skilled nursing facility? Uh, you know, what does Medicaid pay for? What does Medicare pay for? How is that different? And, and then what, what's it showing someone do when they're looking into this? You know, so first let, let's, let's walk into that a little bit. And, um, I guess, uh, you know, you being the expert, you know, what that makes up a skilled nursing facility in, in today's world? So, um, we're one of seven different facilities in Charlotte County offering okay. similar services for skilled nursing. And, and what, and like, when, when you hear that term skilled nursing, because I think a lot of times, I mean, I feel like when, like, if, if, if to the average person watching that doesn't know anything about this industry, mm-hmm. I mean, they're going to assume it's a nursing home, right? Yeah, and nobody likes to turn nursing no, home, know, especially know, know, those who work for. So, right, exactly. Um, but, but that's the kind of like the, that, that would be the impression that people might have of this industry or with this yeah, type of service. There is a serious stigma when right. it comes to skilled nursing, nursing home. Um, but what we offer is inpatient and outpatient rehabilitation. Um, and we do, on the skilled nursing side of it, technically, is IV treatments, okay. IV therapy, um, wound care. Gotcha. So um, at Life Care Center of Punta Gorda, we actually have a wound care team okay. um, with an RN that's in our facility every day, making rounds on all the wounds. And we do have a physician that rounds weekly gotcha. um, with gotcha. her. Um, so what would, what would be, who would be a, an example of that person that needs like a service like that? Because, like, I mean... You're talking about, you know, uh, intensive therapy for, for a wound care. Like, what, what's a typical situation that could be relatable to, like, the, the average person, to the public? Um, so, it could be anything from skin breakdown okay. um, or uh, a, essentially a bed sore. Okay. You know, um, when we have folks that are coming in from the hospital after a qualifying um, three nights stay, gotcha. Medicare will pay for inpatient rehab um, and depending on what the physician's ordering for that type of treatment, right. you could get you know, addressing change up to three times a day. Gotcha. So, so someone, so a family member notices like there's a wound on their loved Developing. one. Developing. Developing mm-hmm. on their loved one. You know, it gets to a point where like, I don't know what to do here. Mm-hmm. You know, they tried maybe, you know, doing something at home, but it gets to a point where it's so severe, they bring them to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Well, in an ALF setting, you gotcha. can't accept uh, one of your residents back unless it's a stage two or right. 100%. lesser. Exactly. So, so, yep, yep. So, so then that person goes to the hospital and that family members, you know, at that, at that point in time, they, they're making a decision. Mm-hmm. You know, what do we do now? What's the best way to, you know, to approach that wound? Mm-hmm. So that's where like, you know, now they're... The, the hospital could recommend or the social worker or the discharge planner mm-hmm. could recommend to to you the skilled nursing facility for that that rehab side of it mm-hmm. which would be covered through medicare mm-hmm. and then and then essentially then they could uh, get that intensive therapy in that session yep yeah. and we offer different interventions so okay. depending on where the wound is actually located there could be an air mattress that is more comforting right um or wound back treatments and we we take care of the wound backs but the important thing is that if there's someone that has you know a wound that needs tended to there's someone there available mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, around the clock to like help make you know to help take care of that. So yeah. like if they're back home, they might have to wait till a nurse shows up the next day or the day after. But right. in your setting, you know it's more instantaneous. So you can you can stay on top of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's part of the skilled nursing. That's under the umbrella. We gotcha. have twenty four hour around the clock nursing care. Gotcha. So that's that's where that term skilled nursing comes from. And so we're now we're talking about the the rehab side of it, but there's another component too. What you guys offer and what, yeah. what is that long-term care okay so that's so that's the that would be the typical like uh maybe that person that is uh is elderly or is a senior or maybe mm-hmm. is suffering from some 
uh, disability type thing, mm -hmm. right? And this is now their home. Yes. Okay. It's okay. a residential community. Gotcha. And at Life Care Center of Punta Gorda, it's identified by floors. Our first floor is for our subacute inpatient rehab. Okay. And the second floor is devoted to our residential population. Gotcha. So, our long term so, care. So first floor is all like it's short term stays, people in and out. They're there yeah. temporarily until they go home. Correct. And then in the second floor is you know this is this is their home. This is home. Gotcha. And so <laughs> now, how, so there's a difference between who pays for what. Cause yes. Because, because so uh, a lot of confusion. I know, and it was just that, which is why we're doing this. I mean, yeah. this is this is this is one of those things that until I got into this industry, I mean, every time I uh, a family member would come to me and say, mm -hmm. "Hey, Chris, what do I do here?" I'm like, I have no idea. Let me go find out, and then I go find out. I'm like, this is crazy how mm -hmm. complicated it could be to, to most people. It's very overwhelming. So, you know, that's what that's why we're doing this to help educate the the community. But um, to your point with the uh, the payer source, you know, ver you know rehab. So my short-term stay versus this, you know, residential long-term community now. Mm -hmm. And and real quick too, what is the percentage though of, of like, you know, typically rehab versus long-term? Does it does it vary depending on the skilled nursing facility, or what what do you see an average being? Yeah, it depends on the capacity of each building. So our building is licensed for 180 beds. Okay. With that being said, we have. Um, eliminated 15 of those beds and converted them into private rooms for our subacute um, patients. Gotcha. Um, so we are at capacity at 165. Okay. And about two thirds of our building is long term care. So two thirds is long term care, and the other that one other uh, one third is going to be your your rehab, your mm -hmm. short term stay. So, and then so tell us about what pays for short term stays versus you know what pays for long term care. So Medicare again will pay for the inpatient uh, rehabilitation, okay. and that Medicare will pay um, depending on what physician group you are involved in. Um, it's just simple for me to say a three night qualifying stay in the hospital will get you eligibility to come into a skilled nursing facility for rehab. Gotcha, and so that's Medicare. So that's me your health insurance. So now on the long term care side, mm -hmm. what pays for that? Private pay. Okay. Or Medicaid. Okay. And there are multiple different shapes and sizes right. of Medicaid. Right, right, which um, I think you were telling me that one time, you said there's seven different types? Eight. Eight, mm -hmm. wow, eight different types of Medicaid. So, there's is there a particular type of Medicaid that pays for your services? Yes, Okay. nursing home Medicaid is under the institutional care program. So we just capitalize it as ICP Medicaid. Okay, so ICP Medicaid, so if someone, if someone like did not have the funds to pay for uh, skilled nursing care, or, or say they mm -hmm. did have the funds, how, how does that work? as far as qualifying for Medicaid or not qualifying for it? So it's a lengthy process um, okay. in terms of financial screening. And at Life Care Center of Punta Gorda, when we're admitting patients for um, short-term rehab, right. with the, if it is inevitable that the patients are clearly not gonna make their goals to go home and they're looking at transitioning to long-term care, that's what we pride ourselves in. We wanna be a transitional facility. We don't ever wanna say we can't take you Permanently, so right. we try to um, identify those needs before admission. Okay. Um, because of how overwhelming the process sure, is, and sure. um, we. And that's where you're the expert. And that's we, that's where like when you. I first met her, like she's like had all these numbers, had everything dialed in, gave me this massive explanation. I'm like, dang, yeah, this girl knows her stuff when it comes to that. So it, it's a very hand holding process, right. Because of how much information is required by the state, right. um, For financial background, so. The state can go up to five years okay. of backtracking, backlogging, gotcha. bank statements, and all of that. To, to, um, to see if someone really did qualify you know, uh, or not in regards to qualifying, qualifying for that Medicaid benefit, right? Right. Okay. right. They're looking at exchange of assets and all of that. Gotcha. So um, the average individual, one person, no husband or wife in the community, um, is eligible with um, a minimum of $2,000 income. Okay. Um, the new statute for 2019 um, is up to $2,313. Um, but for Life Care Center to assist with an application, we, we try to keep it around the 2000 mark. Okay. Um, just to make sure our I's are dotted and, and our T's are crossed. Meaning like, you know, if we're, if we're around this ballpark, you're mm -hmm. like, I can help you. Yes. If, if, if you're way beyond this, yes. then, then at that point you have to make a different recommendation. Yeah, we would refer to an elder law attorney for gotcha. sure. Okay, okay. So, 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 that, so that, that's helpful because essentially, you know, you know, being around that ballpark, you know, now Jesse and through Life Care could mm -hmm. help through that application process, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so 
with um, we would just require like three months of bank statements. Okay. Um, we would look at um, any kind of other assets. If there's property, if if there's a car, how much um, uh, is their home worth? If it's homesteaded in Florida, because if it's homesteaded, they can protect that, and, and that doesn't count as an asset. Okay. Um, and the individual applying can have one vehicle in their name, gotcha. which is a lot. Of, a, a lot of people don't know that. Um, and when you're looking at um, community spouses, if, if there's a husband or a wife in the community um, needing to remain in the community, right. Right. Um, the, the spousal amount goes up to $3,000, um, and they're allowed to have assets in the bank okay. because that spouse needs to continue thriving in the community and paying the bills gotcha. um, as if their, their loved one was home with them. So, okay. and so, um, so, so really, if someone, I guess, were to kind of fit in these guidelines, I mean, the best thing to do would be to reach out to to Jesse, reach out to that person in that, that community mm-hmm. um, and, and see if, you know, go through this process with them. Yeah, so yeah. Because then we can see them, like, all right, check box, that, that work, check here, check mm-hmm. there. And now I'm like, okay, you know, more than likely this is going to work for you. Mm-hmm. We can get you on this program. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay. Um, and the one thing that um, it comes off kind of negative, but um, folks that come from assisted livings that are receiving VA benefits, right. a lot of people don't realize that they lose those benefits when they come to a skilled facility. When gotcha. you apply for Medicaid in a different setting like mine, right. um, you lose those benefits because I don't right. have a veterans contract. Right, gotcha. And, and then what's interesting too is that because like your Medicaid benefits that you're talking about are also di- very different than so if you're if someone is on Medicaid managed care if you're in Florida. If they're on a Medicaid managed care program and assisted living, that is a different bucket in the Medicaid umbrella than yep. than you what know, I'm talking about. Exactly, I'm, I'm not it's one like, of the yeah, eight. Like, this thing I keep <laughs> keep elbowing it, you know. Anyways, uh, but that that is yeah. So one of the eight programs is uh, and so they're different. So when so essentially, if I'm on Medicaid managed care. Like, I have to reapply through your program if I go into skilled nursing? Or is there a, how does that work? There's a loophole. There, there is there's a, loophole. a form that can be signed that See, can be a, waived. Right, which is, a, this is another thing that, you know, it's like you have to know about these things. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people may not know all those different mm-hmm. intricacies of that. And vice versa. So if I have a client who's right. Medicaid approved and has increased their level and no longer needs to stay in a skilled nursing facility that can thrive in an assisted right. living setting, it's a simple loophole. So, so, think, so think about this too, so the, this, this could be the path someone's at home, mm-hmm. they fall, maybe break their hip, break your, you know, hurt, you know, hurt their knee, you have to go and have knee surgery, mm-hmm. come out to rehab, mm-hmm. have rehab in a facility, so now they're in the short term stay side, mm-hmm. social worker's like, hey, this, this, this lovely lady can't go home anymore because it wouldn't be safe for her. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, you know, maybe she goes into long-term care mm-hmm. and she's now staying with you guys in the residential setting, but she's, but she's still pretty, you know, capable of doing a lot for herself. She just can't be home alone. Right. And this could be the person that you can help assist into assisted living. And we've done it many times. Gotcha. So, so, you know, and that's the thing is it's such a complicated, you know, web to get to the ultimate outcome for someone. Uh, but really, it's just understanding where to navigate and who to talk to and how this works. Mm-hmm. You know, so. And there is a time period. So if you um, are ever in need or if anybody listening is ever in need and um, wants to partner with Life Care Center of Pinagorda, I'm happy to help. Um, there is a 60-day um, requirement. The patient has to be in our facility for 60 days before, before. the waiver can be per- okay. performed to go gotcha. from nursing home Medicaid to ALF managed care Medicaid. Gotcha. So what is the what would be the way that you classify when you explain to someone, you know, and the difference between Medicare and Medicaid? Mm-hmm. What's the best way for them to understand, you know, the, the difference between those two things? So Medicare is an entitlement. Okay. When you become sixty five years old, you are entitled to receive Medicare benefits. Okay. Um, Medicaid is an outlet for many different ages. Gotcha. If you're eighteen years or older and you're handicapped um, you're eligible for Medicaid. You're low income. Gotcha. So, so Medicare, senior, me, Medi- you're Medi- eligible. Medicare is intended primarily for you know the elderly population or the senior population. Um, you know when you when you hit that age range, the Medicaid just is, is a is a way broader bucket. Right. You know? Like I said, it's yeah. easiest described as an entitlement program. You've worked all your life. You gotcha. deserve right. this this benefit. That's that's allowed. So uh, so now, um, now if someone were to decide like that they needed this additional help for the loved one for rehab what would be the best way like i mean like is it is it you know how do you get a hospital stay or, or like how does someone um go through that process or do they is it does it have to be a, a certain type of 
issue that happens that, that requires a hospital stay, you know? How does, how does that work? So unfortunately, um, without any kind of traumatic injury or an infection or dehydration, you know, without the admission to the hospital, right. if you don't belong to a specific physician group or belong to an ACO perhaps, it, it's hard to... You won't qualify under Medicare guidelines. You have to have that three-night qualifying stay in the hospital. So if, if you don't, if you can't get into the rehab side of it that way, is it is it possible to, to, to get into rehab like as, an, as an outpatient therapy program? Outpatient therapy, you don't stay in the facility. Right. So you would be coming... But you can still use the services in the yeah, rehab side. absolutely. Okay, so, so it's a, as an other service, so you got someone living there long-term, and mm-hmm. this is their residence. Mm-hmm. You have someone there that's living there temporarily mm-hmm. uh, just to receive rehab. Mm-hmm. And then you have someone that can come uh, from their home yeah. and to the facility to receive outpatient therapy services. And that's, so. a, that's an easy physician referral. That's if just, if so. you're seeking, you know... Right, so so Rehab that services. so that one you wouldn't need a uh, a three night stay in a in a doctor in a hospital, no. right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess I misunderstood. I'm sorry. Just, no, 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 I just I was I was exploring that uh, that other avenue for people because mm-hmm. I didn't think about that because you know that that could be a, a way around not having you know like say maybe you're I don't need to stay there but I could use these rehab services. Yeah, no, that could yeah. be a way to uh, to get rehab still, mm-hmm. um, maybe more intensive rehab, but not have to go through the hospital system. Correct. So, mm-hmm. um, and then would that be covered? Is 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 outpatient therapy covered by Medicare? Or? Medicare B. Okay, mm-hmm. Medicare B. So so it's but it's still covered through that insurance yep. through Medicare. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do accept commercial insurances. So we're contracted with Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, United Healthcare, and Freedom Health. Now, would that be for uh, Medicare replacement and Advantage plans, or, or is that for the supplement plans? Nope, those are managed care plans. Okay, gotcha. So, so that would be so if someone they uh, they they well, I guess give up their Medicare, their straight Medicare from the government in exchange for a insurance provided it's Medicare a, Advantage or Medicare replacement plan. Mm-hmm. It's okay. a product of Medicare, so gotcha. they don't ever technically lose their Medicare. It's just okay. overseen by this insurance company that they choose. Gotcha. So it's like so if like. So Medicare is this organization here, and they work directly with the person, or they say, "Here, here's a pile of money. You guys, as an insurance company, take care of your people yes. on this on this side." Yes. Okay. All right. Um, interesting. So, so anything else that if a family member was seeking these services, what would be the best thing for them to do? Um, I would encourage you to come out to Life Care Center of Punta Gorda and take a tour. Um, you can certainly call ahead and ask for me, um, but um, the office does um, have someone in it. Monday right. through Friday, eight to five. Um, there are multiple staff members at Life Care that are capable of giving a tour if I'm not available. Okay. But I strongly, strongly encourage folks to come out and see the place. Because this way, you can actually sit down with Jesse or with someone one there, on one. one on one, mm-hmm. and, and we and they can take a look at your individual situation. Yep. And so, even if it was, this person didn't live in Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda area, and you lived in you know, somewhere else in the country, just you know, if that was something that you thought, hey, my my, my mom, my dad, my spouse. You know, I can see that they're not, they're using mobility devices. They're having a harder time. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they um, you know, mom's fallen a couple times. Mm-hmm. I am worried about those things. You know, you could be an, an, out, an outlet for them, you know, just to kind of, you know, get a better understanding of, you know, what's going on in their life, uh, what situation they might be in and how you can help them. You know? mm-hmm. Absolutely. So make sure you reach out to the services in your area. Of course, if you have any questions, Jesse's definitely an expert in, in skilled nursing, Medicaid, Medicare, all the stuff that they do there. So if you have any questions for her, please give her a call. Uh, which, how, do we, how do people get in touch with you? Um, the facility phone number is 941-639-8771. All right. And so what, 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 what else we got going on this week or next week? Or this, or we, have, we have an event, what, April 27th? Yes. So April 27th, we're actually doing a senior care conference mm-hmm. uh, right here at Chelsea Place at our daycare center. Uh, that one is actually going to be uh, senior care options, you know, finding the right care for you or your loved one. Uh, we're going to dive deeper into some of these things, and, and we'll also it'll allow you guys, if you have questions uh, about what, what's going on, you know, and, and how I can, you know, how does this work for me? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, do I qualify for this? You know, is this something that... Um, does my Medicare insurance, does it pay for these services? What, what, how could I benefit from them? If you have those questions, make sure you come out April 27th. It's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And you can uh, call this number 941-677-7233 to make a reservation. We'll be happy to uh, see you guys. And Jess will be here to answer all your questions. So. Yeah.
All right. Hey, thanks so much, guys, for, for everything. Thank you for your time today. If you haven't already, make sure you get a copy of... We got the uh, Florida's five-step guide to senior care. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but it's uh, Florida's five-step guide to senior care. It walks you through the five steps that are so important when it comes to caring for you, your loved one, whether it's your mom, your dad, your spouse. Uh, it's a great resource. All it does is it helps you understand what's the process, where to go, and how to get there, and it gives you the resources and the things to think about as to what you might need that's specific to your situation. So if you haven't already, download a copy of our guide. It's on the link below, and, uh, and we'll make sure we get you a copy of that. So thank you so much for today, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye. <laughs> All right. That was good, right? Yeah, that's cool. That's that was awesome. how long? <laughs>